What's going on, everybody out there in Radio Land? I'm your host, Keith Harris. You're listening to the Keith Harris Show, Global Network, right here on Hotline Radio. We're glad you tuned in with us today. We got a very special guest on the show. It is none other than the one and only songstress herself, Ferrari. And we've been waiting to speak to her for quite some time, and she know we know she's a busy lady, so we're gonna hop right into it and start the conversation. Uh, first of all, Ferrari, tell us where you got your name from. I mean. Was it a birth name? Is that your stage name? How did how did Ferrari become your handle? At school, um, a very very good friend of mine, and people aren't usually good at giving me nicknames. So right. That one was good, and it kind of stuck. And when I met my manager, and he was kind of asking me um, what my stage name would be, I hadn't really thought of anything. And when I went through some of the nicknames that I had, this one really stuck. And yeah, that, that's a pretty cool name, as a matter of fact. That's why I was wondering, because Ferrari, like, is, is fresh, is hype, and it's not as usual as a lot of entertainers' names that you hear. It, it has a good vibe to it, and it's, it speaks for itself. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, Now, okay, let's talk about the many different styles you have. Like, how, how I, like you speak so many different languages, right? even more and I think that came from uh, being in a very international choir when I was in school we, we had to sing in so many different languages and I just have a natural affinity I'm pretty good at accents and I've grown up around a lot of different languages so um, singing in different languages is actually a lot of fun oh yeah what type of diff- <laughs> what 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 are some of the different languages you could speak I speak English and French fluently um, and then I'm pretty good at Spanish now I'm getting a lot better and then um the indian language that i speak is called kachi okay. but i'm actually learning hindi right now which is not it's not too far off but mm-hmm. um it's, it's much more widely used than kachi. okay all right i understand now at what point because i'm gonna get into the music in a little while but now you're a great artist and we, we've seen quite a few of your videos so you've been you, you've obviously been on the map you're not new to this at all. Like, when did you realize that you wanted to become a vocalist? I think I realized it when I was like three or four. <laughs> wow. But, um, yeah, it wasn't really a career option um, uh-huh. when I was growing up, definitely. Is, uh, is that because of culture? Like Sorry? Sorry, is that like because of culture and things like that, or? Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. And and my parents were pretty big and strict about education, so it wasn't going to be a path that they were necessarily going to support as a career, as a hobby, absolutely, but not as a career. So I kind of had to, you know, finish school, do my own thing, and then start it myself. And, you know, I've been told by a lot of people, too, obviously, that it's, you know, very unrealistic, and it's a lot of hard work, it takes a lot of money, this and that, and whatever. So I tried for a year just kind of like working normally and not doing it but I, I it just never sat right with me like I had to at least try right so yeah and then once I started doing it things just started to unfold and everything was in sync and so I was like all right cool let's see how far this takes me well I, I bet they look I bet they're looking at you now like okay you know that motivation <laughs> motiv- yeah that motivation and drive worked out for you um yeah 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 now to talk about one of your accomplishments, there's other ones we'll go into, but just this past year, or matter of fact, just this year, you won Best Female Pop Act at the 2014 Black Canadian Awards, correct? Mm-hmm. How did that feel? That felt really, really cool because <laughs> I was up against some pretty big artists right. around here, and uh, I completely did not expect it um we also performed that day so i was kind of geared up for the show and making sure the show went really well because we did a nice little medley of some of my songs Uh um so when they announced me as the winner it was kind of um unprepared i would say oh Uh, but it was really really cool okay it was really cool and looking back i I almost wish i'd savored it a little bit more because it came and went so fast all right now uh, we're going to go into one of your songs for a second. We'll, we're going to Get Loca first. I'm going to play Get Loca for everybody. Uh, that that song that song is definitely is, is something for the club. It's something that people can vibe and dance to and, and kind of groove to, right? Mm-hmm. 
What um what was your inspiration behind this song? So that song has quite a story. I was at an event, um, and I think it was the first time I had noticed the DJ, and it was a female DJ, and she was dressed to the nines. I think maybe if I'd seen a female DJ before, they were kind of dressed a bit more rugged, but this girl was just decked out, like, tube dress, and her headphones were, like, sparkly and diamonds, and she oh. looked amazing. And so I was like, this is amazing. Like, it just added a whole another element to the party. Plus, she was a great DJ. Right. So, when I got home from that event, I was just like, there needs to be a song about this. Like, and it just started coming up in my head. And, yeah. you know, I love a chick DJ because she is so sexy. And that, those are the only two lines that kind of stuck in my head. Yeah. And then it took me a whole year, actually, to finish that song because I couldn't figure out where to go with it. Yeah. And then later, pretty much almost a year later, I was listening to a bunch of uh, beats and going through it and then I kind of it just I don't know it just all came up and it all kind of stuck together with the whole Get Loca and the Chick DJ and the club vibe and yeah. so it, it was a very interesting process yeah cause that that song that song itself does have a, a a certain groove to it like that's you know when we play it now I want the listeners out there to really you, first of all, you're gonna realize that it's a good tune you can you can bop to it in the club but the lyrics itself are there, you know, the lyrics itself itself are exclusive, so you could tell it was a well written song. So, um, we'll be right back with Ferrari in just a second. But upcoming right now, we have a track by Ferrari called "Get Loca." All right, and don't be surprised if you end up getting loca while you're listening to it, right here <laughs> on Hotline. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
You're listening to Keith Harris on the Keith Harris Show Global Network right here on Hot Line Radio. That was Get Loca by Ferrari. Now, Ferrari, it sounds like people it sounds like people might need a bottle of water after that song. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they're dancing up the storm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um so now let me ask you, all right. Let's see. Other okay, now you've worked, you've you've been on the card with a long list of heavy names before. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't know if I should mention them or if I can mention them. So but I mean I mean, how, how, okay, I mean, okay, let, what I start, let's see, uh, Jeremiah, Usher, Jason Derulo, Chris Breezy, Mm -hmm. and then on the reggae side, we got Beanie Man, we got Shaggy, and, um, and we'll get into the song that you have with Egyptian in just a, just a few minutes, but how does it feel, how has it been being able to be on the card with such big names in the industry like that? I don't want to stop using the word amazing, but (laughs) phenomenal. (laughs) Yeah, phenomenal. I mean, I'm not really one to be super starstruck. Like, there's a few, I think, celebrities or musicians or whatever that I really, really look up to, but definitely to share the stage with the kind of talent, like, especially that night with Usher. Like, you know, when I sat back and watched his show, it was just incredible. And I just, had to be like, wow, I just opened up for this guy. Like, that was crazy. Right. And then um, Jeremiah was mad cool. Like, some of them I've been able to actually meet and talk to and vibe with. And then performing, like, the song with Egyptian was just amazing because then you see the crowd going nuts for him. And then we come in and they're just, they're going just as nuts for us, too. And it was just, it, it's been crazy. Right. The energy, I love the energy. Now, what, uh, besides those artists, like, if, what, who would you like to see yourself collaborate with in the future? Like, or what is some of your favorite artists today? So, or who? there's one folk artist I love. I love Destra. Okay. Um, I've, I've watched a few of her shows. She's just amazing. Like, her energy on stage is crazy. And her songs are very, very catchy. I don't know if you guys know Destra, but she, she's really great. Um, I think Sean Paul would be a good fit eventually too um, right. I really a lot of my songs have that reggae kind of feel too yeah and the whole Indian and reggae thing go really well together they do and then um, who else I mean Pitbull I think Pit would be would be a crazy show too yeah but you know people like with the international flavor I think would suit mm-hmm. um, a collaboration with my stuff really well yeah that 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 makes sense because um again your staff now as we talk about the uh, the different styles that you incorporate in your music, now let's take it to to the Indian side of you being Indian uh, of Indian culture as well. Now, as every okay, now as everyone knows or should know that I mean India is known for Jews, medical field. Uh, everyone's heard of Bollywood and the, the enormous movie industry. Uh, this this comparative to Hollywood. Plus, recently, mm-hmm. um, Miss America as well. Now, mm-hmm. here you are, powerhousing in the music industry, okay, of Indian culture. How does it feel to be bringing that flavor and style to the forefront? Because you are introducing people to a style that has been fly long ago. It's just that mm-hmm. folks weren't in touch with it. Yeah, and I, I feel like I've only scratched the surface of what I want to do. But that was a huge... Um, motivation behind me even doing music was to fuse these different cultures together and especially especially like the rich beautiful Indian culture into the pop mainstream Mm -hmm. so it feels kind of unbelievable that I've been able to start doing that and um but I feel like this thirst that I'm I'm nowhere close to where I want to be in terms of bringing and fusing those styles together and really bring it into the mainstream right now did you um have you ever, when you do your stuff, some you do your choreography sometimes, have you ever uh, used, like, the same style that maybe they use in the Indian movies and stuff like that? Cause they're, oh, yeah. They're like, Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I'll sneak it in with <laughs> choreography <laughs> and in the song. But my very first song that I put out was uh, Shockler, who's a big rapper. Right. Um, it has a whole in, a Hindi hook in it. Okay. Um, and the bridge, and it, it was really interesting. And then in the video, I'm wearing malanga and all the Indian jewelry, and 
Right. I just love, I just love mixing it together. And then you'll hear it in some of my newer stuff, you'll see my hear it in some ad libs that I do. Uh-huh. It'll have like a bit of an Indian flavor, or the kind of trills that just naturally happen in my voice to have an Indian flavor. And then definitely in uh, my, in the way I dress, so like in my styling and in costumes on stage and stuff. Mm-hmm. Very accessory heavy, bright colors, which if you watch a lot of the Bollywood movies and stuff, you'll see you'll see some similarity, but with a, with a twist on it, definitely. Yeah, I, I had noticed that, because even in your videos and stuff, I see kind of like the accent of gold color, and like you yeah. said, yeah, I noticed that in the accessories. Um, yeah. Now, I'm going to jump right on this question. How was it to be one of the headliners on America's Top Models? <laughs> that whole experience <laughs> was, was really cool, because it, it, it incorporated so much more than just even the show. Um, there's a lot of promo events that we did before too uh-huh. with uh, some of the models, one one of which was so interesting. It was um, the Edge Walk around the CN Tower. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar with the CN Tower in Toronto. Are you serious? That, what are you? Okay, hold yeah. on. Hold on. Let me st- <laughs> let me stop you right now because I'm very familiar with the CN Tower. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> you said the Edge Walk. I didn't know the Edge Walk had nothing to do with the CN Tower now, Ferrari. It's, I don't know how recent yeah, we had to walk around the edge of it, on the outside. Oh, wow. And it's just me and a bunch of models, and we're in these, like, red jumpsuits, and, okay, we just, we, luckily, we're Did you look, did you look down? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We had to <laughs> hang back and then forward, looking down, and I, like, I'm kind of scared of heights. Like, I'll push myself to do stuff, but yeah. <laughs> I was freaking out. If you watch any of the video footage or the pictures, you might think it's so funny. But it was really cool, and then to go from that um, to the show mm. was was also a, an interesting transition because now we've you know we've met a lot of people and to feel more uh, incorporated into the event as a whole, right? Um, and meeting all these you know crazy models, we said the model being uh, probably the main one that was there, and she she was crazy. She wanted to bunch of jump off the thing tower. Oh man, and I was like, girl, you you're not man. Yeah, she's tripping. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But the show itself was nice because I love when fashion and music uh, come together. It become, creates a very exciting event. And the show that we put on, you know, I had dancers, I had electric guitar, I had a dance hall hype man. It was, it was very interesting all along the catwalk. Uh-huh. It was a fun experience. Okay, that's good. Um, What we're going to do, we will get into, let's see, where we're going to go next. We heard Get Loca. How about Take Me As I Am? Want to go into Take Me As I Am right fast? Play that for the people? Okay, cool. Okay. All right. Here is Ferrari again with Take Me As I Am. And when we come right back, we're going to find out what was the inspiration behind that song. Because is that one of your latest, uh, is that one of your latest singles? Pretty much, yeah. That was released this year in May. Okay, in May. All right, so we'll come right back after hearing that and find out what the inspiration was about that. And we'll be talking more with Ferrari. So don't y'all go nowhere. It's Keith Ferris, host of the Keith Ferris Show, Global Network, Hotline Radio. Here's Take Me As I Am with Ferrari.
listening to Keith Harris, Keith Harris Show Global Network, Hotline Radio. That was Take Me As I Am by Ferrari. Now, now Ferrari, mm-hmm. all of these songs, again, you're, you're, you're a wonderful up-tempo artist, and it seems like, like in your music, you keep the good, you keep a good spirit and a good vibe, but now tell me, what, what was the, um, what was the meaning behind Take Me As I Am? Um, after a lot of um, inner conflict in terms of, okay, you know, which direction should I go? What kind of marketing strategy do we use? Oh, should we do this? We should do that. And, there's, and just a lot of people coming at me with a lot of opinions about what I should do and where I should go and how I should this and how I should that. And it was just, it was a lot for me. So I was kind of struggling with um trying to find what felt most comfortable and what I should do versus what I do do. And um, I've, I've been working with this amazing writer, uh, Joe Lewis, and, you know, we were talking and I was just like, I have some stuff I need to get out. Like, I just need to get it out of my system. I just want everything to come back and just be really simple and about the music and about what, you know, what I want to do as opposed to what this person thinks I should do. And the, the struggle that I have sometimes is that I like so many different genres and I can do so many different genres uh-huh. from dance to dance hall to hip hop to R and B to straight pop to whatever mm-hmm. that sometimes it's hard for me to kind of pick a direction and just flow with it because I get bored. So that's why I like to do so many different things. Right. Um, so I kind of, when I was one morning, like five o'clock in the morning, I just got up and started writing on my phone all these different things that I just needed to send and get out of my system and then, I sent it to my co-writer and then we sat and we kind of put it together and it was interesting because it came out, it, the, the beat that we had for it was a very up-tempo beat, what you just heard. Uh-huh. Um, and it's kind of cool and in that sense it's very like motivational and uplifting and it's a really great workout track. But I've also performed it recently um, with just a pianist and brought it down to a, a, like a nice ballad on an acoustic level and I find it's almost even more powerful like that because it's a whole different vibe and now it's like it's like a very, uh, it's not very powerful, but it, it, it's not upbeat. It's more, it's more beat. Right. That's what I was saying. Kind of, yeah. Now, what, um, now, though, now these songs that we're listening to also are kind of like the EP. Is there, is there a, a, a future date um, for the album that's coming out? Because I know a lot of people have, have to be waiting for that. I think our strategy has been to put out singles um, until, you know, the, the fan base is, is really, you know, big enough to right. welcome an album. Okay. But, you know, even as a newer artist, I think we might go for the EP first. Uh-huh. I mean, I have tons and tons and tons of songs that we're kind of sitting on and kind of siphoning through to see what would be in an album. But I want my first album to be very Um, And I I feel like uh, an EP might. I think what we're aiming for right now is an EP. Uh, See how that goes, and then and then put the album together. Hopefully, an EP like early next year, or 
late this year, but I mean, we're still on so many songs, it's just a matter of choosing the direction and going with it. Okay. An album would be super cool, but I can't wait to do one. I, um, I just don't want to rush it. You know, that was going to be my next, next, uh, I was kind of, you know, you kind of led me into my next question is, but see, you've been, uh, you know what, you wouldn't have freshman fear, though, of your first album, because you're, you're already doing this, so it's not like you've been thrown into the studio and just told, here, go ahead and put out an album, like, you are, you're, you're pretty comfortable with what you're doing, so when you go in there, it'll be exciting for you, but you'll, you'll probably flow right through it, right, like. Yeah, yeah, and even like all the songs I'm sitting on right now, if I could put them all on one album and share it with you guys, the song that I do, because I love every single one of the songs, right. and they, they range in different genres from like dance to to um, you know songs with a little bit of Latin feel, like Get Loca, to club hit, to hip hop, to like deep R and B, and I just feel like all of them represent um, a little like a different side of me. Yeah. So I would take like these thirty songs and put them on an album and be like, here. Your world, this is what I'm all about. But yeah. it doesn't quite go that way. Did you know now? Now, did you know? Okay, like you say, when you switch and you go from like Latina and then you go to a, to all different types of styles, when these songs come up in your head like that, is it? Are you just feeling in kind of like a Latino vibe one day, or maybe like a Jamaican vibe the next day? Like, how do you do that? Like, that's yeah. amazing. It, it, it's usually dependent on my. Right. And then what we have to work with from the producers. Um, so sometimes they'll send like a, a cool R and D, hip hop kind of beat, and um, that you know whatever my mood is and stuff. Right. Uh, that's what'll come out. Okay. But I don't know. Like, I get kind of get inspiration from everywhere. So it also like sometimes something will just be stuck in my head, like that whole get local thing with those two with those two lines and. It, it really took finding the right beat to put it on for the song to even finish. Okay. Now, I know uh, you were, you know, talking about fan bases and things like that. Now, I, me, myself, I do notice that you have, you know, you, 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 I'm assuming you want more fans, but you're being kind of modest too, because you do have a following, uh, <laughs> Ferrari. Like, you already do. And, and, a, a, and some, and some endorsements, if you don't mind me saying as well. Like, you've got people yeah. behind you who believe in and trust in your music. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, what's, yeah. Okay, I don't know if you can, can, it, can I mention what they are? Like, is there, you've got, okay. Oh, for I, sure. I, you yeah, know, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you've got, you got AMA Swiss diamond watches and jewelry. I mean, that's a big deal, Ferrari. Like, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and They're then, a really great company. Right. And Pretty by Claudine as well. I'm assuming now. Is that bag? Is that bags or is that clothes or is that makeup? Yeah, it's mostly purses. Genuine oh. leather purses from Italy. Okay. Or Italian leather, sorry. That's what's up. All right. But she's got a cool, uh, unique style in what she does, and so her her purses are cool. Not not typical of what you see all the time. They're they're quite unique and very good quality. Okay. Now, what what does Ferrari do? The people want to know what does Ferrari do when when you're not in the studio? Like, let's say you get the day off or you're not on tour, and I'm sure you're workaholic because it shows in your music, but what do you do when you've got time for you? Hmm, well, I love traveling. I was just in the UK this summer, and um, it was a, a family trip, and I, I love traveling. Like we, my brother and I, we did a bike tour around the city, and I want to, I definitely want to travel more, but usually right. on my days off, I'm just trying to catch, like if I'm here in Toronto, I'm just trying to catch up on everything else, so I'll go for a workout or, you yeah. know, dance classes or, you know, write or I have a little dog. I, I like to play with him and walk him. And I live by the water, too. Um, oh, yeah. I love running and walking by the water, and I can just spend time there and meditate. But uh, I like to so go out every once in a while, too, and, like, let loose and non for a you know? Yeah. Um, I, really, I really like dancing and being active, so anything active. Like okay. Dance, Swimming, running, um, sports in the summer. I'll play some beach volleyball. Right. Um, but yeah. yeah. Now, as for um, also, uh, you you also do something for the youth. Like you're an official ambassador for Toronto's Youth Day. That's a that's a big deal. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's really cool because the Youth Day here um, is create was uh, kind of created by Kylie and Dugging, and she she created it because we had one summer here. And this is before I moved to Toronto, actually, mm -hmm. um, which was 
they they nicknamed it the summer of the gun and there was just so much youth violence that you know she wanted to do something about it and she's created this whole day and this whole show that she's actually taking internationally um and I, when I performed on the show and I, at the press conference, I did my motivational talk and, and performance. And I know there's a lot of kids that do look up to me and I try to be, you know, a good role model. And I've, I've had a very fortunate path in my life where I was able to be educated and have a really good upbringing and good people around me motivating me and inspiring me. So I've kind of, and, and I've also been through a lot of, um, you know, not so great things either that I've learned from. Right. And I was lucky enough to not go down a destructive path, but right. to channel, you know, all my energy into singing. Singing, that, that's really how I started singing. Was, that was my way of venting, was, you know, finding all these Mariah Carey songs and just, like, belting it out. And that's how I would get out my anger and frustration with whatever was going on. Yeah. So I feel like um, I have a lot to share in terms of, you know, motivating and helping the youth or, you know, it's even come across to adults that, you know, whatever I'm doing seems to be helpful in the advice and stuff. Yeah. All right. Now, you got a lot of hits, so we're ready to go into another one. Now, this one is you featuring Egyptian. And mm-hmm. if, if I, I'm sure unless people have been underneath the rock, they should know who Egyptian is. Um, Big reggae singer. And Ferrari has a track with him as well. So how about you introduce this track, Ferrari, and we'll go into it. Your body, featuring Egyptian. Right here on Hotline Radio, let's go. <laughs> Let me see your body. Shake your body. Shake your body. 
That was Shake Your Body by Ferrari featuring Egyptian. And again, people, uh, this music, like, Ferrari, this music is all wonderful. Like, you're already a pop star. I don't know if you know that yet, but you're, you're already a pop star, so that's amazing. Now, other than, than good vibes and happy music and times, where did the idea from that, like, what mood were you in when you came up with that one? I'll put it like that. With Shake Your Body? Yeah. That one was definitely more inspired by the by the beat, okay. and um, actually Roy and I, uh, my manager and I, we co-wrote that one um, before even Egyptian was in the picture, and it was on this really cool dance beat, and we were kind of just vibing with it to see, you know, what, what were we feeling, and we wanted something that was uh, one of those like party anthem tracks that just made people want to get up and dance because it's it was, a lot, it was around the time, like when it first came out, it was around the time when everything was just about, was about dancing and feeling good, and everybody was responding to that, so we wanted to kind of to do that as well, and then it was, it was a really good song the way it was, but then when Egyptian jumped on it, it just gave it this whole different life, because now you're using the dance in the dance hall, yeah. and I wasn't even sure he'd be into it, because you know, his music is much more like reggae, right. reggae vibes, maybe a little bit of dance hall, but... He, he loved it, and the the addition of Egyptian on this track is really, I think, what made it. And the fact that he kind of stuck around for the video, and we were able to perform it live, like, this track has had a whole different energy that I never expected it to have. Um, the crowd went crazy to that, didn't they? Sorry? The crowd went, the crowd went bananas to that when you guys performed yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when, we, that's when, you know, he turned to me, and he was like, yo, we need to do a video for this. from Ferrari musically in the future. So I'm going to ask you one or two more questions real quick. What has been the best ride about your success so far? What have you enjoyed the most about this? almost like the rush in general pretty much yeah yeah okay um next question real fast what advice would you give to the young uh young girls out there young women young ladies that 
uh, see themselves being in your shoes in the future, what just good advice would you give to them real quick? social media or where they can pick up the EP in stores and, and find your music and follow you. All right. So pretty much all the songs that you've heard, with the exception of Get Loco, which will be coming up on iTunes soon, or on iTunes, so if you're local to purchase. Otherwise, everything is on YouTube. Check out the videos. I have, I have a lot of cool videos on YouTube, um, even some acapella stuff that people might like, music videos, all the songs, some uh, G-pop videos. And uh, definitely hit me up on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Um, I like to I like to be on social media and post some cool stuff that I'm doing. So yeah, definitely hit me up, say hi, check it out. Hope you like it. Okay. Um, before we get out of here, any shout outs you like to give Ferrari? Definitely want to shout out um, my manager, Sugar and Baby Group, or Robinson. Um, you know, he's been there since the beginning, and uh, you know, I feel like we're on this journey together. And mm -hmm go cray cray soon um, I want to shout out my family for being super supportive the writers I've been working with Joe Lewis um, the Autobots gang the producers Chaz Blackstar Mike Finn um, and you know even if I have forgotten anybody like I just want everybody to know how appreciative I am of everything and everybody that I've met and including you I want to shout you out and thank you so much for having me today thank you a lot of fun we're glad we look we were we're excited to have had you here on hotline radio as a matter of fact we've been excited waiting on this interview for quite some time <laughs> with you so uh we glad we definitely glad to hear from you and we hope to hear more from you keep make sure you keep um you know keep us in tune with what you have going on make sure that uh that, that you know you and you and your manager uh, you and your manager, Sugar, and, and make sure that you guys keep me posted and keep music coming to me so I can constantly rotate it over here on this side of the border, okay, because it's hot. Definitely. Thank you. And um, a lot of people need to hear about it. Uh, now, right before we go, you're performing in Washington, in, in Seattle, or Washington, right? In case anybody's out yeah. in that direction in the USA or anything, they can go check you out. Yeah, it's for the Miss Washington pageant, and it's October 19th, and it's just outside of Seattle. All right, well, listen, Ferrari, we love you over here. We love your music. We're going to keep you in rotation. Thank you. We're glad you stopped by, and you stay in Thank touch. You for me. No problem. And later on, lay on, down the line, lay on down the line, once you get a, you know, after you put out some more songs or whatever it is, we'd love to have you back on the show sometime. Perfect. Thank you. I look forward 